if, if, if the Lord corrected you, would you get mad? No. Why? Because what he has to say to you is very important. Amen? Say this, I love my pastor. At the beginning of the service. And at the end of the service. And I will still love him. During fellowship dinner. What, is that, what does that mean, Stella? It means you're going to say something that's going to step on our toes. God. Uh, Covering his bases. I, 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 I've been teaching, you know, that love, love does and love gives. Love forgets, love forgets, uh, uh, forgives and forgets. Uh, I've never had a study like this. Uh, uh, you can ask my wife. I've been studying on love corrects. And the way God does it, I mean, it's only for our own benefit. So uh, there's some good examples and everything that I... Uh, in fact, I was studying and typing this morning. I looked at my clock and, God, it was going to be 9 o'clock and I got up at 6. And I'm going, hey, man, I got to get ready, man. I got to, I got to look like Randy. I got to do Randy because, you know. But praise God. God's a good God. Say this. I am teachable. And I am obedient to the word of God. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We invite the Holy Ghost to come into this service and be our teacher. I thank you, God, for a revelation knowledge. And Father God, I thank you that we learned from the Word of God. And I thank you for that. Now we're going to praise you and give you all the glory and all the honor. And I thank all the viewers, Father God, that are watching this, Father God. And I thank you that they, they bring their faith. They bring their worship. They bring in their obedience to the Word of God. And I thank you for that. And in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said what? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Good to see everybody. Said, you, I haven't recorded. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> You're not going to... No, I'm just waiting for my $200 bill. <laughs> All the advice he gives us. All right. I know a place where we can go to lay the troubles down in your soul. I know a place where mercy flows, tempest winds make you wider than snow. Like a tide, it is rising up deep inside a current that moves and makes us come alive. Living water that brings a dead to life. Whoa, we're going down to the river, down to the river, down to the river. Let's get washed by the water, washed by the water, rise up in amazing grace. Let's go down, down, down to the river. You will lead change. Let's go down, down, down to the river. Never the same. I've seen it move. Dusty roads into paradise All of my dirt, all of my shame Drowning the streams that have made me born again Like a tide, it is rising up Deep inside a current that moves and makes us come alive Living water that brings a death to life Whoa, we're going down down to the river, down to the river, down to the river to pray. Let's get washed by the water, washed by the water, rise up in amazing grace. Let's go down, down, down to the river. You will be changed. Let's go down, down, down to the river. Like a 
In the same old road For miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice Tell the same old lies If you're trying to feel The same old voice inside There's a better life There's a better life
tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is
worship you, God. We worship the mighty King that we serve. We worship Let's just God. worship the Lord. Yes, worship Him. Oh, Father God, we thank you for your presence. Feel this place. Feel this place, Father God, with your spirit. Your glory and your presence, Father God. Father God, I just thank you that the people here, Father God, are willing to receive right now. And put it into action, Father God, whatever the Spirit of God is saying to them. I thank you, Father God, and I give you praise, and I give you glory, and I give you honor. You said, Father God, where two or three are gathered today, are gathered together. You're right in the middle. And I thank you for it, Father God. And in Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said what? Yeah. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. That was good. Good morning to our church. It's good to have everybody here. It's good to have Audie here. Welcome again. It's nice. And all our guests, welcome. Our Sunday school, I can't say enough. It's so good. We're just reading a book by Andy Womack that's been so totally good. God wants you well. We're in our last, our last chapter, right? So we're almost there. And then we'll start something new. But it's been very, very good. We taught on, Jimmy taught on the words are powerful. Negatively or positively, they're powerful. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, that thrills me to death. Oh, it was just to die for. You're speaking words. I mean, words are powerful, people. So come to Sunday school. It's really been good. <clears throat> Our service is at 10 a.m., Bible studies at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, and we're reading the book by Rick Renner. How many of you are reading it ahead of time? It is tremendous. It'll step on you big time. And to me, it kind of threw me out of the baby stage of being offended by little petty things that don't mean a, a thing. He said, look inward. Look inside. Lord, what can I do to change? It's like Joyce Meyer when she said, Oh, Lord, work on Dave, her husband David. Change him, Lord. Change him, Lord. Do something with Dave, Lord. The Lord told her, Let's work on you. Let's change you. It's got to start from here. It's got to start inside. Let's look inside. Let's be people that not only talk it, walk it. Let's walk the walk. Because you can say a lot of things and mouth a lot of things and live like the enemy and live like the devil if you can say that. You're not any better than what the world's doing. So let's be people that really believe God's word. Our prayer, 6 p.m. On, on Wednesday, we've been praying. We do anyway. I don't know about you all, but we pray for the nation of Israel. We pray for our, for our nation. We pray for the church. We pray for each and every one of you. That teaches, uh, I don't get off on politics too much. But I will say this. Pray for our next president. The Bible told us to. The Bible says to pray for all those who are in authority. And then there's another scripture that says, the reason why you pray for those in authority, because I put them there, he said. Amen. So, and then I read another scripture that says, do this for the Lord's sake. And I kept saying, for the Lord's sake, if I do what he commanded us to do, then whatever I need, and if I'm obedient, it's going to come to pass. You see how that principle works. And you know, in that, on that statement that he said, he put him there, even if he didn't, even if they got up into authority, they're still in authority. They're still in authority over you. And the Bible says to pray for those that are in authority. That's a commandment. So, either way, you've got... Exactly. Whether you voted for the person or didn't vote for the person, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, it doesn't matter. Pray. Ask God. A, I'm going to shock some of you, okay? God's not a Republican. God's not a Democrat. 
He's not on the Boston Tea Party. He's not a, a conservative, conservative. He's not liberal. He's not from the uh, whatever group you want to be from. He's God. Okay? And God can work through any <coughs> party if they're willing to obey. But a lot of times, uh, the Spirit of God spoke to Brother Hagin and said, the, <coughs> the reason this country is going the way it's going is because I blame you guys because you didn't pray. The church. The church did not pray. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of responsibility taught on us and given to us to pray. Amen? Bringing, it down, have, bringing you, it down closer, even your boss, he's in authority over you. Oh, yes. So pray for them. Pray for your bosses. A lot of times prayer will turn things around and it'll work on you because you won't be so judgmental and so shook it, up with them. It's like Sean. It's like Sean when she works for uh, and helps out uh, uh, Greg and Greg says, do this. She, she goes, yeah, but it'd be better to do this. So what does she have to do according to the word of God? Tell them it's better my Husband way. and wife relationships. <laughs> Even though the man's the head of the house, I don't mind listening to sometimes her opinion is better than mine. I'll say. <laughs> just okay. kidding, just kidding. JK. Sometimes I might miss it once in a while. Once in a while I might miss it. But can you see how that principle works? Uh, some people, you're wrong. Even the people who are watching us, you're wrong if you don't vote because you say, I don't like any of the parties. I don't like none of the people that are running for president. That's not your job. Your job is to vote and use that constitutional right. gift that was given to us right. and the right that's given to us. Amen. Amen. You need to vote. You know, a lot of times we get shook up with our bosses. We do. <clears throat> we've worked and we've had people over us and maybe you didn't get the promotion that you thought you deserved. Maybe someone else that wasn't so deserving that you thought got the job. But you know what? You just have to shake it off. I mean, we get so upset with little things. And you know, maybe God has a better promotion for you coming up down the road. You know, don't, you just don't know. You just have to believe God. Say, Lord, I'm not going to get offended. I'm not going to get upset and grumble and complain. I heard, I, I believe it was Brother Copeland that was praying this prayer, and I, I really enjoyed it. He said, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We need to pray that. Let your will be done here on the earth. And I heard, uh, I believe it was, I don't know if it was Joel Osteen, or I don't know who it was last night that prayed. Oh, no, it was Joseph Z. He said, America, come back to the Lord. We need to pray that. America, come back to the Lord. We need, to, we need to shake up the, the nation. We need to shake up America. Um, our Communion and Mission Sunday is the first Sunday of every month. We choose to do it once a month. Also, we support Jeannie Cook. Her husband went to be with the Lord this past year. And um, we support Jeannie. She's been, they've been in the Darien jungle over 40 years. Over 40 years. And they've seen a lot of of miracles because she said a lot of the people in the jungle they're not Americanized isn't that something they're not Americanized they believe what God's Word says and I believe that if we would really take a hold of God's Word and believe it with believe it we'd see manifestations I really believe that so lift her up in prayer uh, guess what our fellowship dinner is here we got all kinds of good food back there, too. So even if you didn't bring anything, please stay with us. There's so much food. It's, please. It, it's, it doesn't cost you $20 to go eat at McDonald's. No. I found out, you know, I, I told my wife, I go, hey, let's go to McDonald's and we'll eat cheap. Cheap. Yeah, right. <laughs> cheap. Man, it's about $11 just to get that number one. With a, uh, that, 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 that. Big Mac yeah. with the fries and, 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 and a, a drink. drink. I'm not lying to you. By the time you pay your taxes and everything. I told him, I said, I got a lot of leftovers in the fridge. <laughs> so guess what? We stayed home and ate leftovers. <laughs> he said, 
you saved me 20 bucks. I said, well, hand it over. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> she, she wanted me to tip her, now still lose $20. <laughs> See? So our fellowship dinner is today, and like I said, if you didn't bring anything, don't matter. Stay with us. Our men and women's meeting is the first Saturday of every month. You don't even have to remember the date, just the first Saturday of every month, and it's the, the 3rd of February. So come. Invite a friend. Come. We have two guys that lay out a table for us with breakfast. Oh, my you're missing out. If you want to eat a cheap breakfast, it's free. Very good. Yes. Um, our daily reading, I know we repeat this over and over. Oh, and before I go into the daily reading, I passed out contribution forms. I haven't finished them because some of you weren't here yet. But if you have any questions about the total, please let me know. Because there's, uh, on one of the, on one of the <laughs> contribution forms, I think it was one of the Baca kids, Matthew, he gave a dollar fifty three and I put fifteen dollars and thirty cents. So see, I make mistakes also. So <laughs> when I looked at his total, I said, What? Can't be right. So anyway, if you all have any questions, please see me after church and I will correct it. Because I have the check number and the date and everything. So <clears throat> just let me know if you disagree with the total I have. Uh, our daily reading, we encourage you to read the word in our church. It's so important because, because it just is. The Bible says it's life to your, to your bones. The word of God is life to you. And this is just me, but I think you can turn people around with praying the word over them. Amen. You can. Because God can deal with a person's heart. You can't change them, but he can. So uh, read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. When I read it in the morning, oh my Lord, it spanks me all the time. Because love is kind. It's patient. It endures. It doesn't get offended. It rejoices in the truth. God's word is truth. Read 1 Corinthians. Read Ephesians 1, 17 on down to the end. Maybe six or seven scripture verses. Just, it just encourages you. Psalm 91 is a good one to pray over your family. No, no, no plague will come near my dwelling. No plague. You know, we learned, in, we, we talked in Sunday school. We have authority. We studied that book, The Authority of the Believer. How many are believers? Then you have authority. You can't be mamby-pamby with the Word of God. You have to use your authority because the enemy, he won't flee if you tell him, Oh, Mr. Devil, please leave me alone. You're going to have to stomp your feet and say, Devil, that's enough. The Word of God says this. And the Word of God says you have to flee. You have to. He scampers. So read uh, Ephesians, read 1 Corinthians, Psalm 91, Psalm 23. There's so many scriptures you can read. Isaiah, oh my goodness. There's, you know why I like Isaiah? Because it said, thus saith the Lord. When I read that, I knew he was speaking to me. I knew he was speaking to me. Saith the Lord. So read, read your scriptures. And that's all the announcements I have except for Natalie. I just wanted to remind everyone that today is Sanctity of Sanctity Human Life Sunday. Human life. Every human life has value, mm -hmm. everyone. Yes. Um, on, President Reagan implemented Sanctity of Human Life yes. Sunday on, yes. uh, in 1984. Yes. And, and, the, and it's the, it, was the, um, it was the 22nd, I think, that year. But it, it's the third Sunday of January every year. And it represented the um, the date that Roe versus Wade was passed back in the 70s. So that's one of the reasons that, and it's 1973. Um, we want to celebrate Sanctity of Human Life Sunday because, and and realize how precious human life is. Um, and Roe versus Wade was overturned on January 24th, 2022. So 
we can, and, and in, the, in the state of Colorado, if, if one in five pro-life Christians would vote their heart and their conscience and their moral values, this would not be a pro-abortion state. That's it would right. be a pro-life state. Right. Can you imagine what would happen if all five, instead of just one in five, voted? Yeah. So keep that in mind when it comes to election day. And then I wanted to share uh, Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, lists seven things that are abominations to God. And they are. And it says these six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, <clears throat> hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who uh, sows discord among the brethren. But number three is hands that shed innocent blood. He hates hands that shed innocent blood. And if he hates those, how much more innocent is a baby in the womb? is a baby in the womb. So that's just something to keep in mind today as, as we have celebrate. 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 Sanctity of human life. Human life. Yes. Yes. Praise God. God's a good God, isn't he? Good. Say this, I'm healthy. I'm, healthy. I'm, strong. I'm strong. And I'm prosperous. I'm prosperous. I have ears to hear. I have a heart to understand. I pray over you right now. I pray over you right now that the spirit of, of understanding will come to you. Yes. And that's out of Ephesians. That the spirit of God will give you understanding of what we're going about to say. Amen. Yes. Praise God. I, when I study, I always ask the, I ask the Lord. I says, Lord, you know, there's things I don't understand. And then as soon as I do my cross references... I get to understand a little bit more, little by little by little. I get to uh, uh, look at if different translations. The King James sometimes it's kind of, you know, you got to remember God didn't talk like the like like the King James translation, okay? And uh, but praise God, Amen. Well, let me have my tithers and my my ushers, and let's take our tithes and offerings for today. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If you want to give uh, <clears throat> towards anything in this church, just mark it down on your envelope. Amen. But the Lord, uh, He requires us to give our tithes first before anything else. And somebody asked me one time what tithe means. Tithe means 10% of your of your, of your earnings. So if, if I make $300, my tithe is 30 bucks. Yes. And uh, I'm finding out that uh, I do it for the Lord's sake because he's the one who commanded us. But in a way, he, he takes the devil away from our finances so our finances can grow. At least we're planting seed. Amen. And if you don't plant seed, you have no return. So don't blame God if you're broke. If you're broke, I look at my finances. I look at my giving. It's like Brother Hagin said, anytime I get sick, I, I turn around and I start looking at my love walk. Well, if you're having trouble in your finances, I look at what I gave. Every year, <clears throat> my wife in January gives you a contribution. You should look at it and say, this is what I gave. Okay? Uh, you might have to look at it. You might have to Look at it. Uh, you might have to look at it. And you might have to look at it and say this. Oh, by the way, I think I'm going to give more than what I gave last year. Amen. Amen. Now, remember the prophecy that uh, Rick Renner gave. In the year 24, he's coming after things that are in the polit political realm. And then he's going to come after the financial realm. If he can steal your money... You can't give to the church. And if we can't support like Brother Copeland on his victory, then he has to cancel because he doesn't have money to make the payment. Do you understand that? So a lot of people will say, well, what, what does my $100 do? A lot. What does my $20 do if I give an offering to Brother Copeland? 
a lot. If a million people gave $20, can you imagine that he could pay the monthly payment for the, the cost for the broadcast for one month? Amen. I was listening to, uh, I ran into this tape accidentally. This, this tape's probably five, six years old. And Gloria Copeland was there. And she said, uh, when my husband and I got married, we had a rollaway bed and it wasn't mine. It wasn't ours. We had a table that Kenneth made in his shop. They had a few items. And what she did when she was reading, the, and she was a, a Methodist lady. She got born again and she started looking at the word, reading the word. Remember the word of, the word of God when you read it corrects you. It gives you knowledge. Remember what I said about ignorance. Ignorance, you need knowledge. Rebellion, you need discipline. And so she started looking at, at, uh, at the Word of God. Then she looked at what she had. She goes, we don't have anything. And then uh, Brother Copeland said, I'm going to give $10 to a missionary. I don't have $10. Amen. And so they put that word to practice. Now my point is this. Everyone here can be a millionaire. Don't look at me with that look. Every one of you can be a millionaire. If you follow the principles of God and you listen to His correction... And you do exactly what it tells you to do. When to give, when to hold back, when to give, when to give, and when to give. Now, if you want to stay poor, that's your business. But if I want to be successful and prosperous, the tithe comes in first. Then Jesus said, uh, in Malachi 3.10, then the Lord said, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you a blessing because I can trust you. There was a lady one time that got up and said, I'm believing God for a million dollars. And uh, I looked at her and everybody kind of looked at her. She looked kind of spiritual when she said that. But when she only gives $25 out of the whole year, is she going to get the million dollars? No. I can get $25 by mowing one lawn. Is that my salary for the whole year? No. So out of a good heart, when you give. But if you don't give, don't blame me. Don't get mad at God. Don't get mad at your husband. Don't get mad at the kids because they're always sick. You know? I'm going to tell you something right now. You need to look inside and find out where am I missing it. Now, in 24, the prophets are speaking out. They're saying, if you don't, if you're not, it says, be a tither and be a sower. I believe in sowing and reaping. I believe in seed time and harvest. Stella and I, for 29 years now, every year we've gone up a little bit higher in our finances. Every year it just seems more money comes in. You know why? Because as soon as we get blessed, we say this. We're tithers, we're givers, and then I go, who can I bless? Who can I bless? But if you want to hoard the money and you want to keep it to yourself, you go ahead. But I promise you, in due time, the Bible says that that money will come out of a bag that has holes at the bottom. So I'm just teaching you good. You can do whatever you want to do. But I will say this about this church. You're a giving church. And we're a blessed church. I've been in some churches. I feel sorry for the pastor. Because the church really looks bad. The furniture looks bad. The place looks bad. 
the sound equipment's bad. But if he's afraid to preach, tithes and offerings, that's why they're in that position. Even if he teaches tithes and offerings and the people don't give, God can still take care of you. The church comes first. The tithe comes in. Amen? I'm not going to preach on that today, but I'm just going to tell you right now. If you feel in your heart that you're broke, you never have enough, I look at my tithes. If you've lost your paper, your contribution form, you can call her anytime. And it just takes her just like that to get into her books, get into QuickBooks, hit certain buttons. I don't know what buttons she hits, but your offering will come up on what you gave in 19, I say 2020, 21, 22, and 23. Amen? You know what I'm really happy about? Some of the kids are giving. God looks at that. Amen? Be a tither and be a giver and never be broke. Amen? Okay, anybody need a contribution form? I mean, a contribution form. Anybody need an envelope? Tithe envelope, anything? Amen? If you want to give $10,000 and you don't know how to spell it, just give me the check, I'll fill it in. Amen? Money cometh. Not only to this church, but every church that teaches correctly. I pray that money, millions of dollars, will come into the Copeland's uh, ministry, the Victory Channel, uh, to Jesse Laplanus. And people say, yeah, but they're so rich. Yeah, they ate hot dogs. When they first started. That's why I say every one of you could be a millionaire if you follow the principles of God and you know exactly what you're going to do with your money. But if you keep your money in the bank and you think, ooh, i got to keep it here, I'll give you $10 when God told you to give 1000 I'm just trying to open up your mind. Some of us, we come from the old country. We need to get into some new country sometimes and be givers. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Praise God. Let's live our tithes and offerings. Father God, you see the tithes and offerings, Father God. I thank you, Father God. You, this is seed time and harvest, sowing and reaping. And Father God, I just thank you that as they give and give the best out of their hearts, Father God, you'll able to bless it back, Father God. And I thank you for that. And in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said what? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Go ahead and minister to the people. Amen. Is God a good God? Amen. Amen. These are the contribution forms. Look at them. Amen. God's a good God. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid to give. I'm, I'm not afraid to give. People say, uh, I, I've heard people say this. And uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know exactly what they're trying to tell me. I, I really don't quite understand it. Maybe one of these days you guys can explain it to me. But some people say, I never carry cash with me. Well, that, that's your business. I always have a credit card. Well, that's your business. Me? I like to carry money. You know why? Because if I go to a restaurant... If I go to a restaurant, and it's happened to us, pay for that individual's dinner. No, I can pay. I can pay with my credit card. I can pay with my debit card. But I'd rather take out the money and just lay forty dollars right there and say, "Have a meal on this." Amen. And sometimes the Spirit of God will impress us to give money. To people. Now, how many know Jason Gallegos? 
her son. Raise your hand up if you know Jason Gallegos. I tricked him. I said, uh, we got blessed with some extra few dollars. I said, we'll give you $50 and a tank full of gas if you come over so we can watch the football game. An hour and a half, he said, he's at the front door. <laughs> I would too. I drive 50 miles too one way. Uh, you know, you give me 50 bucks and I get a, a, a tank of gas. But if my mom gives me 50, I may, maybe Frank will give the other 50 or whatever. Me, I just like to have the money flow from Stella and I. I want the money to flow. You know why? Because the more it flows, the more it reaches other people. And if I do what God tells me to do, that money's going to come back. And um, uh, Kenneth Copeland said more and more and more and more. And I believe Jerry Savelle said that uh, in this year, 2024, 100 100% return. And I, and I know people, it, it, I, I know people right away, they get on finances. So that's all they're thinking about. I don't, when, when, when the prophets say that you're going to get 100 fold return on your giving, I don't think, it's, I don't think to myself, it's always money. You might go to school. Chevrolet and there's a 2023 Silverado and you go there and you go and the, and, and the, the people there are saying, hey, we got to, you want to buy a pickup? Well, I really wasn't looking at one, but they go, well, we got to get rid of this 2023 pickup. We've had it for two years now. We'll make you a good deal and sell it to you for $30,000 when it's worth 50000 Hey, man, that's, is that a good deal? And then throw some more incentive, incentives in there, and all of a sudden you're going, my God. My God can work anyway. Don't put him in a box. Don't do it. When we're talking about a hundredfold return, I've talked to people, and about 95% of the people that I talk to about a hundredfold return, well, it's not always money, but that's all they're thinking about. Me? On a hundredfold return could be me going to, uh, how many like to go to Olive Garden? Man, I, I, I don't pronounce the word right, but I like it. The servers look at me with, like this, but they know what I'm saying. They go, sir, what do you want to eat? I said, I want to eat fotocini. And I want a lot of sauce on it. How about the salad? I don't want a salad. How about soup? I don't want soup. How about bread? I said, sir, bring me my fortuccini, extra sauce. I enjoy that. Praise God. And then all of a sudden, somebody turns around or the server comes up and says, your meal's paid for. Our meal was paid for. At one time, the, the, the person that paid for the meal, I believe, was not even there. They can call it in and use their credit card and use a debit card and pay for it. They just found out we were there. See, you, you understand what I'm talking about? Don't put God in a box that he's going to do it this way, that way, and this way. Amen? Praise God. Now, I've been teaching on love. What love does. Love forgives. Love forgets. Love does a lot of things. But what I'm going to get on today is love corrects. Remember, you said you were going to help me with this sermon. Remember, you all said you loved me? Amen? Take out your, your paper, your notes, or whatever you have to do. And if you have to, listen to this broadcast again. Listen to this service again. Uh, the people are watching us. You do the same thing too. Go to John 13, 34. Love corrects. Love corrects. Part 2, 3, 4, 5. What is it now? Okay. 
Love Corrects, part three. Now, in, uh, in John 13, 34, he says, The new commandment I have given you, that you love one another as I loved you, and that you also love one another. Remember what I told you, the progression. God the Father loves God the Son, loves us. Can you see the progression? This is a principle law. It's a principle that, that, that works in the spiritual realm. Romans 5, 5 says that the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. It's given to you because you got born again. Amen? Verse 35, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have loved one for another. You're supposed to love the brethren. Look at me. You need to love your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Look at me. Not all of you are looking at me. If you got your head down, it's because you don't want to listen to what I have to say. You are to love one another as Christians. You are to love one another if you're Christians. I'm going to use Randy for an example. I always use Randy. If Randy makes a comment and he throws it at me, I still love him. Not my love. My love is natural. But in the spiritual form, way, when I got born again, that love of God has been shed about in my heart. I'm able to love him as God loves him. As Jesus died for him. Take, take your niece, for example. Judy says, for a fellowship dinner, I'm bringing you a banana cream pie. She shows up with an apple pie. Some people will get upset over something stupid like that. I still love her with a love that's in me. Shed abroad by the Holy Ghost and the love that came from the Father to the Son to me, I can still love her and forgive her. There's some of you people right here by the Spirit of God, you need to get a hold of that principle and forgive people. I got, I'll tell you something right now. If you don't forgive, you will not grow and develop in the Word of God. And you will not get the best of what God has for you. Amen? Is God a good God? John 15, 9. John 15, 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my prayer. Verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. In other words, the love of God dwells in my house. His love dwells in my house. It dwells in me. What I do with it is up to me. He can give me this gift. Now listen closely. I don't have to use it. I can reject it. I can say, there's no way I'm going to love this guy. Look what he said to me. That blank the blank or whatever you want to call him. That's not walking in love. If you're a born again child living God and you've done that before, you better ask God to forgive you. Rick Ritter said in his prophecy, the hard times are going to come in 2024. You know what I think about this church? I think you guys can overcome that stuff. I, I, think, I, I think you guys have been taught. You know, I'm not, I don't get up here and read you a sermon out of Reader's Digest. There's one lady that quit coming to our church because she says you repeat yourself over and over and over. Faith comes by what? You know how many times Jesus talked about forgiveness? He talked more on forgiveness than he did on healing. Now watch this. I have an assignment for you guys. Read, read uh, James and read 2 Peter. Why? 
because it's going to tell you what not to do and tell you what to do so you can receive your healing. I already have two or three sermons besides this one already. A lot of times you don't receive things because you don't want to forgive. You don't receive things because you've got a, a hard head, a big head, a bully head. Uh, what else do I say? Thick, bullheaded. What else do I say? In this church, I was evaluating this church. In this church, I don't have too many shy people. These three are not shy. Right? She's not shy. She's not shy. He watches what he says, but if he has something to say, he's going to say it. Amen? Alan's far from being shy. Uh-uh. Greg? No, Greg? I don't think he... Is, is Greg shy, Sean? No. If he has something to say, he'll say it whether it's gentle or unkind, but he'll say something to you. I'm not knocking him down. Don't get me wrong. That's why you're in this church. Because I'm not shy. And usually the personality, people are drawn to certain churches because of the personality and the anointing that's on that preacher. Because if you had a shy preacher over here say, well, I really don't want to say that because, you know what, I, I, I really don't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. God's a good guy. My wife... My wife acts very timid. No, she's not. My wife acts shy. No, she's not. The ones who are not shy are her four sons. Not one of them is shy. They've got something to tell you. They'll tell you from. They'll just. And then later on, I get a message. I shouldn't have said that, Pastor, but forgive me. And I go, no. Praise God. So, we, so do we have the ability to forgive? Do we, have, do we have the ability and the empowerment? Are we enabled by the Spirit of God to, to be corrected and to walk in love? The answer is yes. Amen? Praise God. God's a good God. God is love. So if you're taking notes, I'm just reviewing very short here. If God, if God is love, then love is a person. Has to be. If I have love inside of me, I'm a person. I can act just like Jesus. Can I go one month without sinning? Yes. Now, it might be hard for some of you, but no. no. Amen. Remember, you said you were going to love me. Go to Proverbs, the third chapter. Go to Proverbs, the third chapter. Here we go. Proverbs, the third chapter. I studied this. Not to the full extent I should, but I could, there's only so many hours that I could, that I could study. But praise God. Proverbs 3 is a really good book to read. But in verse 11, it says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. In other words, don't get tired of hearing his correction. Don't say, I've heard that. Amen? 
when it comes to the correction of the Lord, it may be five times in one day. It might be ten times a day. Whatever it takes. Now, now look at me. When the Lord corrects you, it's not to bully you or to embarrass you. It's to correct you. Now, there's some pastors that get up here, they go, shame, 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 shame on you. They should never do that. Because he needs to go like this. Some of you are nodding your heads right. If I'm going to say something, then I'm perfected in correction. There's nobody that's perfected in correction. Now, some people think they know it all. Some people think, ah, man, I, I got a hold of this already. No, you don't. Don't despise his correction. Amen? Is God a good God? Uh, I like it out of the Amplified Bible. My son, do not despise or shriek from the chastising of the Lord. His correction by punishment or by subjection to suffering or trial. Neither be worried. I don't like the last part. I like the first part. He's not going to punish you. He's not going to, in other words, he's not going to belittle you. He's going to say, my son. For the Lord correct, this is out of the NLT. My child, don't reject the Lord's dis, uh, discipline and don't be upset when he corrects you. I like verse 12. For the Lord corrects those he loves just as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. You, you understand that? Uh, even out of the Amplified Bible, I don't like the way it's said, but I like it out of the NLT. Do you understand why I go to different translations? I get a, I, I get a different view on it. <laughs> Praise God. Is God a good God? Amen. Amen. Remember, uh, uh, verse 11 and 12 operate by faith, and it gives. If I operate and God corrects me, like... A son that's corrected. Now, my mother ran the house. My mother ran the house. My dad was always working. 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, he'd take off, uh, drive about 150, 120 miles a day. He'd come back around, oh, I don't know, 5, 5.30, and that's when we would eat. Next day, he'd do the same thing. So mom took care of us. She disciplined us. And when she started calling me Frank, I knew I was in trouble. Most of the time they call me Pancho. But the tone of the voice that came out of my mom's voice and the way she looked, I'm going to tell you, she ran a strict house. But if it wasn't for that discipline, I, I wanted to learn a lot. Now, I got, away with, I got away from my mother when I was in college. I got a scholarship to go because of my running ability. I got a scholarship to go to college. But ever so often, that first month in September, I don't know why, but I kept turning around. Because some of the roommates, and of course, you know, I met guys from California all the way to New Jersey. They were on our cross country team. They were on our track team. They go, Frank, let's go have a cold beer. And I said, I, I, I don't drink. Well, Frank, let's go smoke a joint. I said, I don't even know how to smoke. So I had all this coming at me, but I kept always, I don't know why I kept going like this. Somebody said, you're looking at your mom, even though you're, you're a long distance away from the house. But I was taught something. But if you never correct a son, this son will go different ways. And I promise you, if you don't correct your son, you don't correct your daughter, 
he uses that uh, analogy, he uses that example, the kid will go all over the place. I had a father come up to me and tell me, I live for my kids. What I had to say to him, he wouldn't have received it, I just kept it to myself. I said, that's wrong. Because if a father lives for God, he's showing his son how to live for God and not live for himself. So if I bring that up to us as a 50-year-old or a 60-year-old people, can you act like that son? Yes, you can. I don't want to do that. You know how long I've been doing that? I've been doing that for 20 years. Big deal. Maybe you need to change. There's nobody here that, that you have it all together. There's nobody here. By the, watch this, what the Spirit of God just showed me right now. There's nobody here that got in an argument and you were right. Nobody here got in an argument and you said things and then you look at yourself and go, I was right on what I said. No, you weren't. Because my Jesus never talked like that. You can take it, leave it, chew it up. Do it. I know what I'm saying. I got a lot inside of me. Amen. Everyone here that's got in a dispute with somebody else or, or you disagree with somebody, you know, you were wrong. By that I mean this. You got upset. You walked out of love. You got into strife. You got into resentment. You got into bitterness. And that's not the nature and character of my God. My Jesus and my God is kind, patient, loving, and forgiving. But people, if, if I say that to a, a group of people just in the world, every one of them would probably disagree with me. Well, I had a right to say that. Well, he hit me. Now, your daughter was telling me about basketball game. They hit her across the forehead. They knocked her down. I don't know what else she told me. And the referees didn't even call it. She said she got three fouls within one minute. And I'm listening to her. All I said was, did the coach take you out? Yeah, he took me out. I had four fouls. But I was so busy getting ready for service, I, didn't, I forgot to ask her one question. What did she say? What did you do? Where was your heart? Yep, yeah, but we're in a basketball game. Big deal. I could be at work. I could be in church. I could be at a, at a restaurant. There's a way to talk to your server that that meat's not cooked right. I don't like that. There's a way of doing it. There's a, there's a protocol. Amen? Is God a good God? But praise God. So love corrects. God is good. And we're going to need it. How many here need to be corrected every day? Let me see every hand go up. Uh, Alan, pick both hands. Yeah, there you go. Everybody needs correction because in Proverbs 3.11 says, don't despise correction. As a minister, every time I get into the Word of God, I go, oh, oh I should have said that. And then Sal comes up and that's, that's more piled to my hurts already. She says, that was very unbecoming of you. And I go, right away, I think on what she did yesterday. I, th I think what she did yesterday. So I got my shotgun. I got my two barrel shotgun. I got the two big bullets that are snapping back like that. And I'm ready to do what? Not to fire one, fire both barrels. But if I have the nature and character of God inside of me, 
and my God is trying to correct me and show me his love, I keep my mouth shut. Amen. Is God a good God? Amen. Hebrews 12, 5. My wife and I got talking about this yesterday. Hebrews 12, 5. Hebrews 12, 5 says this. Have you forgotten the exhortation which speaks not unto you as unto children? My son, despise not the chastising of the Lord, nor faint when you are rebuked of him. Now, in the other translation, it says this out of the NLT. Have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. For Verse 6, for the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one of his, each one he accepts as his child. But all of that is correction. It's encouragement. Don't take it as an offense. If he tells you to quit drinking, alcoholic beverages, and you've been a Christian for 30 years, and you've been drinking alcohol for 30 years, and he tells you, I want you to stop that. What do you think that individual might do? He's been doing it for 30 years. What do you think he might do? Put it on the other side of the coin? He said, one way the individual may say, you want me to drop it? I'll drop it. But on the other side, because you always have two sides of a coin, the other one will say, it didn't hurt anybody. I got invited to uh, discuss the Bible with this guy. We sat down on his couches and love seat. And then he gets up and goes to the fridge and he takes out two coarse beers and put them on the table. He says, that one's yours. I said, uh, I, I haven't been drinking uh, since I got born again. And he says, well, I do. I didn't make a big thing about it. I didn't preach to him. But when I looked at that coarse beer, remember Ham's beer, that waterfall and that canoe? My vavas start coming down. But I was strong because I know what God delivered me from. And I said, no. Be a good witness sometimes. You can be a good witness and God's correcting you and you not saying one word. Would you agree with me on that? Amen. Verse 6, for whom the Lord loves, he chastised and scorches every son whom he receives. Now, he doesn't punish you with a whip. He doesn't put cancer on you to teach you a lesson. He gives you his word. Amen? Praise God. He's got a good God. Verse 7. If you endure chastising, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chastises not? In other words, I've been a school teacher. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still involved in uh, teaching because I still teach driver's ed. I still have these kids. I have them as 14 and a half to 15, 16 year old kids. I can tell the kids who have been disciplined. I can tell. In my classroom, the last year I taught algebra one. I can tell. I can tell by the way they walked in their posture, the way they looked at me, 
and the way they sat down. It didn't take long. And then I said, these are the rules of the house. These are the rules of my classroom. These are the rules that are mandated by the, by the school board, given to the superintendent, given to the principal, given to all the teachers. And then I said, you guys have a copy of that. I was like just Judy. My opinion is the only one that counts. Ask her. She was my egg. That first day she looked at me, she says, man, you're rude. You're obnoxious. You're... I said, we only had one day of class. I had kids in alternative school the parents didn't even want. The teachers didn't want them in classroom. The next thing was to kick them out of school. I got hired as an alternative school teacher. I was there for nine years. Our success rate was 95%. Why? Without rules in the classroom, the kids will go everywhere. No rules. Now, I don't know if you're in charge over somebody, but if you're in charge over somebody in a given department and they kept saying, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. And then uh, Rochelle says, Miss, Ro Miss Rochelle says, do this, take this, put this medicine over here, do this, take the blood pressure, take the blood pulse of that individual. And they go, yes, ma'am. Are those kind of people you like to work with? Yeah. Will those people get promoted? Yes. Well, it's the same thing with God. Exactly. If we do what we're supposed to do, God's going to promote us and put us in a higher level. Ooh. How many seen the karate kid? Raise your hand. Karate. karate. I call it karate. Uh, raise your hands up again. Okay. Daniel LaRusso? Mr. Miyagi? Daniel was kind of feisty little thing, wasn't he? You know, she was a widow. Her husband passed away, so he was kind of like... He, he needed some help. And then he got beat up by these guys that were in uh, martial arts school. And then Mr. Moagi comes in because he lived in the same apartments and he protected him. Man, Mr. Moagi, pow, man. Those four or five guys, they're all laying on the ground. <laughs> Daniel gets up and goes, you know, he didn't say that, but he goes, uh-huh. <laughs> and then he went up to him. Daniel. He says, can you teach me? There for a little while, Mr. Moagi didn't answer him. He's a smart kid. He's a smart guy, Mr. Moagi. And then finally, he comes over to his house. Remember that one scene? It's for about two minutes and 15 seconds. Already looked. And he says, I want to learn how to fight like you. Mr. Miyagi said, I'll teach you, and that's my part. Your part is to listen and obey and don't ask questions. <clears throat> Daniel LaRusso goes, okay. They made a contract, a contract. That was a deal. And then Mr. Miyagi had a bucket of water and soap and a sponge, a yellow one. And then he says, well, Daniel said, when do we get started? He said, well, right now. See, he thought in his mind, what did he think in his mind? Man, we're going to go to a, a, a place where it's all matted and, and I'm going to be wearing my outfit. He sticks his hand in the bucket and pulls out a sponge and he says, wash all my cars. He goes, what? 
No questions. And Daniel Lusso, he was going to say something. No questions. You said so. He washed all the cars. And then he says, now I want you to wax them. And he takes out a sponge and he takes out the wax and everything. He says, wax on with your right hand going this way. Wax off going this way. Did, La did Daniel LaRusso understand what he was saying? No. When God tells you not to do that, you may not understand everything, but in the long run, five years down the road, down the road, God's promoting you to a higher level. And he did it. And then he got mad at him. Daniel. He said, I stained your whole fence. I painted your whole house. I waxed and shined and washed your cars. And he was mad. Remember, he walked off. And then uh, uh, Mr. Magi says, Daniel! He says, come here! And then he squats down and he goes like that. What did Daniel do? Boom! He goes like that, boom, boom! And then he goes like that. Techniques out of staining the fence. Techniques out of washing and waxing the car. Techniques and painting the house all came to that little scene. So everything my God is teaching you about the Word of God, take it as correction because it's only for your good. Walk in love, walk in forgiveness, and then forget. Now, I got a scholarship to go to Shatter State College because of my running ability. I won't stay. I had like, I don't know, I think eight, eight state gold medals. I did pretty good. I keep telling Stella, Stella, you're lucky I didn't live in Rocky Ford because you would have come after me. <laughs> you would have seen me down the halls and you would have gone like this to me. <laughs> I, would, I, I said, yeah, I would have wiped you off your feet, man. I was famous. <laughs> no, would you believe in high school I didn't say a word? No, I, I hardly ever talked. I, I kept it to myself. But I worked my butt off. I ran my I ran, I ran hard. And coach comes up to us. I'm gonna show you how to run. Guess what I thought? <laughs> show me how to run? You wanna see my pedal? I didn't know this. But every stride, I learned this in college too. Every stride you take, you breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. And then you have to relax your muscles because you can get up tight. And if your muscles get really tight, you're exerting too much energy. I didn't do it. I got hyperventilated. You know what hyperventilation is? You breathe in oxygen, you give carbon uh, dioxide out. What happened was I was breathing too fast. And I had a hard time breathing. So coach, at, uh, I, I had transferred to USC up in Pueblo. He gives me a bag. Thank God I didn't get a sponge. <laughs> he gives me a bag and he says, put this over your mouth and breathe in and breathe out. I had tinkling all over my legs, all over my arms. Because my body wasn't functioning properly because I wasn't following the rules and I did not take correction. How does this apply to my Christian walk? Same the same thing. If you're having hard times, you're having a hard time to forgive, you got a big mouth, you get angry fast, you get disappointed fast, 
you're not following the rules of God. So I had to breathe in. 15, 20 minutes. I didn't get, I, I, I didn't get uh, well right away. I had to go. And then guess what coach told me? Now go run. Wax on, wax off. But his, his direction was... But to me at that time, being 19 years old, I really don't want to listen to that. Why do a lot of young football players walk off the field? They hate to be told what to do because we live in a generation of rebellious kids. Amen. Is God a good God? Amen. Praise God. Is God a good God? Amen. Ephesians 6 1. Go to Ephesians 6 1. Is this good? Man, I got inspired as, as, as I was going through this. And there was a, one time, coach told us if I catch these guys drinking, uh, you could lose your scholarship. And what coach, uh, uh, oh, he's in the Hall of Fame up there at USC, uh, uh, Coach Spank. Walk in the gym and you can see his photos. Uh, don't, don't let me catch you drinking. And I kept, you know how big Pueblo is? Coach, you're going to go to every bar and every sports bar. And you, you see how rebellious I had gotten? So I took a gamble, 90 to 10, that wherever we went, what are the chances? 90 to 10. I'll take it. Well, these guys after practice said, let, 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 let's go to that pizza hut. It, it's on now in Bessemer. Izan? Izan's pizza? Ian's? It's still there. We ate there. And we met there. Well, we're going to have a, a pizza and something to drink. I walked in with, the other, with, with my other running mates. We ordered some pizza. The guy ordered a pitcher of beer for a dollar and 25 cents. Now they're about, what, $10, $12? I don't know. And I said, nah, I, I don't want one. I'm hungry. We went to practice the next day. Coach called us in. He said, I told my wife I was going to go get some pizza. He said, I was sitting in the far corner when I saw all you guys go in. He said, I was watching you. I wasn't drinking. <laughs> Follow the rules of the land, and all will go well with you. Amen. With that thought in mind, go to Ephesians 6 chapter. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first com uh, commandment with love. If your kids are taught right from the word of God, the first promise is they'll have a long life. But as parents, some of us, we didn't know. You know, we made a lot of mistakes. Thank God that uh, we're forgiven. Verse 3, that they may be well with thee and that you may live long on the earth. If you want to live a long life, I like, I've been saying this for years, for years, years, even before I married Stella. Well, I've been married now 29 years with Stella. 
I kept telling my kids, I'm going to live to be 100. Now that I found out that you can live to be 120, I said, I'm shooting for 120 now. But there's certain steps I have to follow. There's certain laws. There's certain principles I have to follow. I have to listen to his correction. And one of the main corrections, well, I shouldn't say main, but when I married Stella, And the Lord showed me that Stella was going to be my next wife. And we went on our first date. I said, I'm going to treat her like what I tell the high school kids. The girls asked me what I thought about dating. I said, if your boyfriend doesn't treat you like a princess while you're dating, he'll never treat you like a queen when you marry him. How many believe that? Gospel truth. Gospel truth. After we, on our wedding day, I asked her to marry me. I said, I'll take care of you. Now God showed me how to love her. I made some mistakes. How many know that song, I Crossed My Heart by Joe Strait? She, she, she got part of the song and put it in an 8 by 10 plaque and gave it to me for Christmas. I have it in my office. And the first part of it says, you're going to have to help me. On the first part, it says something, you're my miracle. Something about you being my miracle. Uh, I, 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 look it up. Look it up. Take, take, take out your, your, your iPads, phones. Uh, look, under, look for the words for, I cross my heart. You're, you're my miracle. Best thing ever happened in my life, or something like that. Quick, get that. I I I want to, I want to read it to you, because I put it on my, uh, I I I put that plaque in my study. Okay. Oh, right here. You will always be the miracle that makes my life complete. That's what she gave me. But I said that to her before I married her, before Joe Strait wrote that song, and I said, you copy my, you copy, you copy my notes. I should sue you for at least 10% of the royalties. But God gave me correction. Can you see how that works? Amen? There was a story about a little boy who did bad in school. This is in the old days. You know how the teacher would, in the corner, would put a circle? And if you did bad, you, go to, you had to go stand in the corner, I should say, and put your nose in the circle? Well, he had to do that. And some kid passed by. And the boy said, I'm standing on the outside, but sitting down on the inside. In other words, was he rebellious? Is he receiving correction? No. Be very careful who you marry, people. Be very careful about your kids and your grandkids, who they go out with. Pray for them. Don't shove it down their throat. They won't listen to you. You may listen to the correction on the outside, but reject it on the inside. There's so much to be said. 
there's, there's so much to be said. Love corrects. Love gets things to adjust and do differently. That's what I did. When I married Stella, I said, I'm going to do things different. Well, I said it to myself. I didn't tell her. And that's true with your boss. That's true if you're a supervisor of any kind of department. That's true in any area of your life. Praise God. Stand corrected. I'm, 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 I'm going to finish right now. I have so much to give. I think I have four pages of notes. I love my wife. I bought her a chain <coughs> from Case Jewelry about two, three years ago. I walked in the kitchen and I saw a chain on the floor. I picked it up and I gave it to her. She says, the chain you gave me, it broke. I said, we're going to Pueblo tomorrow. And I took her. I took her back to Kay. Listen now. She did take out the insurance on it. You, you, anytime you buy jewelry, they ask you, do you want insurance on the ring, on the necklace, earrings, or whatever? And she says, no, I take care of my stuff. And I believe her. Well, we took it back. The girl looked it up and says, uh, it's going to cost you $194 to fix it. Now you can tell how expensive the chain was. But we got it on sale. I said, how much? She, she described the chain to me again. She said, uh, I'm going to do something for you. Because, see, all those accounts are under my name. I said, what are you going to do? She said, I'm going to open up an account as though you bought this chain today and you took the insurance out. What do you think? You, you think that's a pretty good deal for you women? So the chain's going to be fixed. Little things like that my God will intercede for you or stand for you and help you out through a certain situations. But if I want to get to that level where God has me, I have to stand and say, I take the correction. And sometimes you're going to have to bite your tongue. Sometimes, like I said, to Mexican people, you're going to have to use duct tape. <laughs> to the white people, carry a stapler. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. But, but, but really, I'm not. And the love of God will grow stronger and stronger and stronger until you get to a point that when somebody offends you, 
you don't even take notice. Because 2024 is going to be tough. You're, you're going to have to stand firm. And the Spirit of God brought this back to my remembrance, Randall, two times already. Once when we were singing praise and worship and once right now. I want you to pray and lift Randall up to, uh, lift, I want you all to pray for Randall and lift him up to the Lord. I know he runs a tight ship. But sometimes you can get tired. That's when you start doing it on your own. Being a pastor is not easy. I've had women and men want to take over this pulpit. I told them, start your own church. It's not as easy as you think it is. I, I don't know, Randall. I don't know what's going on. It's none of my business. I'm just telling you what the Lord told me to do. Pray for him. Lift him up to the Lord. Surround him with faith and love. And that his character will flow out to the people, to those prisoners. And some of them might even get saved or get out early. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, know, that, I don't know that business. I don't, I don't know that trade. I don't, I don't know. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Do you, do you have some people at work that are kind of rebellious? The sermon was good, huh? I hit a gusher today. You're going to have to say, okay. I'm going to pray different. I'm not lying. I'm not lying to you about those alternative kids. The teachers didn't want them. But you're a teacher. You know what I'm talking about. You've been teaching now for what, 32 years? 28. I'm in my 54th year. You're in your how many years? Fifteen? Whether fifteen, twenty-eight, or fifty-four, kids are kids. Oh, they just act like that. Boys will be boys. Not when they're in your control. That's a lie. We get them after you say, if I catch you doing that again, when in this year it came out this year. But how to stand in your class and use godly principles and watch my whole my whole class change. Stella says, I don't see how you do it. I says through the word of God. Ninety-eight, ninety-seven percent success rate. And they can't do it in the classroom. Because if a teacher doesn't handle it right, the boss doesn't handle it right, the supervisor doesn't handle it right, you're going to have a mess. You have to do it God's way. And how he, and how he tells you what to do. Jim was in charge of uh, maintenance or, or the lawn at uh, USC in Pueblo. Did you catch one of your guys going around and around and around because this girl was sunbathing? Did one of your guys using a riding, mo riding mower, he, he just kept going around and around in the same park, cutting the grass. Jim walks up there and he looks over there, there's a girl over there sunbathing. <laughs> so you had to correct him, right? You had, to, you had to do a lot of correcting. Some quit, some listen. And the ones who listen at the end of the month, you had some money in your pocket. The other ones, Mama, can you send me $100? <laughs> Correction is very serious. 
He'll take that critical spirit out of you. Next week, I don't know if I'll be able to do this or not. It's called evil. <clears throat> Inclination. That was a new word for me. I ran into it accidentally. Evil inclination is that I'm going to do it my way regardless of what anybody tells me. I'm going to do this. When Moses came down from the mountain, could the people of Israel, could the Hebrew children see the glory of God on his face? So he could talk to them, but then when he left, he had to put his veil over his face. But when he went into the Holy of All Holies, he would take the veil off. Since we're in the new covenant, we should not have, we shouldn't have a veil. We should not be, if we're ashamed of what we did, it's kind of hard to get into the presence of God. But if you repent, you can walk in to those holy places and be correct, corrected and the uh, God can minister to you. Martha and Mary. Jesus is teaching. Mary sits right there at the feet of Jesus. Martha goes and disturbs Jesus while he's preaching. Not good. Jesus, do something. Jesus gets up, very gentle. He goes, Martha, Martha. When the Lord calls you by your name twice, <laughs> you better clean your ears and start listening. He said, Mary has chosen the right things. Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus looking at his face. And the more I look at Jesus' face, the more I become like him. Martha had her veil over, so to speak, and couldn't see that. Now, by faith, we have no Marthas in this church. <laughs> we have nothing but Mary's. Randy's really trying to smile, really. He, he's trying really hard. He's trying really hard to go. I'm not picking on him, but I am in a way, but he knows me. This is good stuff. I think I might have to go home and listen to this again. I said things that, praise God. Let's all stand up, please. Is everybody here born again, child of living God? Amen. Everybody here received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Amen. Amen. If you were to die right now, will all of you go to heaven? Yes. You have your one ticket to heaven? Yes. Amen. Father, we thank you for the message today. I pray for the people out there, Father God, that they receive, they will receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And it's easy. All you got to do is just, just ask Jesus to come into your life and forgive you of your sins. To say, Lord, I messed up. I need you. I want you to be my Lord and Savior from this day forth. If you set that prayer in faith, you are a born again child of the living God. Amen. Get in contact with us. Get a hold of the people that put this all together. And let us know that if you got born again. And Father God, I thank you for this sermon, this teaching on correction, Father God. That we take heed to it. Proverbs 3.11. 3, despise not correction and father god i ask you to bless this food that we're about to eat father god in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ and everybody said what amen amen, amen.
Amen. If you have to go outside and repent, go ahead before you come and eat. No, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Let's, let's go eat.